There are a couple of ways that people come to second opinions. One is when someone has been told there isn't a solution to your problem. That is very difficult to hear. Unfortunately, sometimes it's true, but also sometimes it's not. Sometimes the solution may depend on technology, and there may be technology in one hospital system that is not available in a smaller or a more rural hospital system. The second thing is sometimes the patients get a sense that uh, things aren't completely clear, and they maybe don't feel like they're getting the answer or complete answers that they want from their caregiver, it's perfectly appropriate for them to independently reach out and say, can you please confirm this for me? Or what is your view? I commonly tell my patients to get second opinions. I recommend them, particularly when we're talking about difficult paths, difficult treatment strategies, difficult risk assessment. I will often recommend people that I respect and suggest that patients will seek a second opinion to improve their own understanding and make sure that, that we're really doing patient-centered care. What's best for the patient? Medicine is uh, an art. Uh, it's not always a linear process. It's not adding up numbers and coming to a conclusion. These are many subjective variables and different physicians with different levels of experience or perhaps different uh, training uh, can come to different conclusions. These would then be confirmed with some objective test. It's always appropriate to make sure you're looking at a problem from all of the angles and having Second opinions from different specialties or different levels of specialty is perfectly appropriate uh, and should be, should be done anytime there's a question. So it, it's not a trust issue at all. Uh, and in fact, I, as I mentioned, I commonly recommend patients uh, will get a second opinion uh, for difficult or, or problematic cases just because I want to make sure that the patient is comfortable with the conclusions that I've reached, that others will confirm those uh, conclusions. And this is just a chance to get confirmatory evidence that, uh, yes, we're on the right track, yes, we agree, or perhaps uh, there's an alternative uh, diagnosis or an alternative solution that may not have been presented and patients can get more information. Getting more information is never the wrong thing to do. So at Ochsner, we have uh, sub-specialty care. So uh, many times in the community, a, a, a cardiologist will do stress tests on Monday, uh, cardiac catheterizations on Tuesday, uh, they'll see patients in the office on Wednesday and go back to read echoes on Thursday. They, they put in a pacemaker on Friday. They, they are able to do the complete uh, spectrum of care. At Ochsner, we narrow those specialties down so that, for example, I'm an interventionalist. I only work in the cath lab. I focus all of my activity in the cath lab. We have other doctors who are completely focused on heart failure. We have doctors completely focused on arrhythmias. We have doctors completely and narrowly focused on imaging. So nobody at Ochsner really does the whole thing. Uh, we all do pieces of it and we go deep. And that is what differentiates our practice from the uh, standard community practice. So again, the, the virtual second opinion has the benefit of being extremely convenient for the patient, being readily available. There is very little wait or lag time between requesting a video second opinion and, and seeing the physician, as opposed to an in-person visit, which requires travel, time, and oftentimes there's some delay in the in-person visit. Once I've seen you on a video visit, I can much better decide if I need to see you tomorrow as opposed to in one week or two weeks. And so the physician can do what we call pull you forward if they think that that uh, is um, appropriate. If, if there really is some need for urgency, the video visit is a great way to kick that off. It also establishes a relationship. Much of patient care is, is the relationship between the physician and the patient. They're people. And in a video visit, you can decide whether you really like, trust, uh, and want to work uh, with that person. Uh, so it's a great way to test things out without having to make the full commitment to come for an in-person visit. There's a theme called uh, de-escalation, meaning that we can take patients who have been recommended to have bypass surgery, for example, and during a second 
uh, during a second opinion and, or a video visit, uh, we can decide that maybe that patient can be treated with stents without an open heart surgery. So we can go through a process, we have a, a mechanism to determine the level of ischemia and the kind of problems they have and whether it is safe to de-escalate from bypass to stents. By the same token, sometimes we can de-escalate a patient who's been recommended to have stents to be managed with medical therapy. Um, and this is truly helpful to patients because avoiding procedures that may be unnecessary or procedures that may not uh, benefit them uh, greatly is uh, avoiding a lot of harm or potential harm.